Welcome to another segment of Politics Done Right. You know, we've been going over several issues recently with police brutality in this country. I mean, uh, it is sort of many times out of hand. Well, I got an FYI this morning from the president of the uh, Houston Peace and Justice Center that uh, revealed a new case. Well, I don't know how new the case is, but I figured I better go ahead and do a little bit more about this. So uh, with us today, we have... Uh, Jeff Rees, who's the president of the Houston Peace and Justice Center, and Alberto Ruiz, who is the uh, lawyer for the person whose neck was broken. So, Jeff, why don't you tell me a little bit about the story and how you got involved with this story? Well, um, I don't know if you remember, there was a case that Randall Callan had had of a young man that was taken from his truck on a traffic stop, and uh, basically his arm was almost broken, and he was brutalized and arrested for a Class C misdemeanor. And I was contacted by a, a young man and his girlfriend uh, of a very serious incident that happened in, in uh, Pinehurst, Texas. And uh, through finding out what happened, I contact, you know, I've, I've been in touch with his attorney, uh, Alberto Ruiz, and very thankfully, he's got a, a very good law firm that's helping him. So I'm going to, I want to be careful on what I say. Albert, can you, you want to comment and then kind of bring us up to snuff on what happened? Sure, and thank you for the opportunity to be here to share this information uh, with the community. Um, you know, my client, uh, Gary, on January 19th, 2021, so this is pretty recent, um, was riding his motorcycle to his girlfriend's house. Uh, it was late in the evening, and um, as he was on his way, he was passing um, police who were uh, doing a traffic stop. And, uh, you know, because they were doing the traffic stop on the side of the road, he kind of had to go around them. And, um, and so in doing that, unbeknownst to him, the police started following him um, to pursue him so that they could stop him for, you know, uh, I guess, uh, unauthorized, you know, kind of going around them and not really a proper charge. But either way, they didn't like that. And they followed him. And they followed him all the way into the neighborhood where his girlfriend lives. And um, as he was tur turning left and turning right down the road, uh, he either sl slid and lost control because the, the road was a little bit wet, or he was uh, hit from behind by the police cruiser. And as he was getting up from his bike was the first time he realized that police were behind him. And uh, as he got up, he raised his hands and said, hey, you know, what did I do? And Pretty much without further inquiry, the police tased him. Uh, he fell back to the ground. Um, there was some, you know, communication about it between them, uh, you know, while he was trying to recover from being tased. And they didn't explain to him why he was stopped. They didn't, uh, you know, give him an opportunity to explain himself. They put him in handcuffs and um, they then lifted him off the ground. Uh, other officers arrived on the scene. They lift him off the ground, all is a whole body, and they were gonna throw him in the back of the car seat, kind of like sideways, like a log, you know? And in doing that, they slammed his head against the door frame of the police car and broke his neck. Um, they dropped him to the ground, then they picked him up again the same way, and then, you know, bulldogged him back into the back of the, of the cruiser face down lying laterally in the back of the police car where he passed out. And the next thing he knows, Gary's waking up in an emergency room. Um, not even, well, by this time it was, he was already in, he was already uh, had received emergency surgery on his neck and he woke up uh, to find out that uh, the doctors had to uh, correct uh, his practically paraplegic condition by fusing his neck vertebrae uh, in order to save his mobility. And since then, his life has never been the same. He'll probably never recover. I mean, he's a young 40-year-old man who was working, making $60,000 a year. Um, and now, you know, he, um, he'll never be able to work like that normally again. Uh, he's having a very difficult time and we'd like the community support um, in this, you know, 
um, search for justice. Now, is he, can he walk at all now or? Well, luckily and miraculously, the doctors uh, worked so quickly and effectively that they that he is able to walk. He was pronounced paraplegic when he got to the hospital, but they were able to, for now he's able to walk, but he's so fragile that if, if the man falls or trips or, or gets hit the wrong way, he could potentially lose all, all loss. Of because the, the vertebrae, are, they're still healing right now. Correct. Now, what recourse, uh, what, what have they said about it? Have they taken responsibility for breaking his neck? Well, you know, according to the, to the rules, you know, in, in this type of a case, uh, um, Gary did timely file a complaint to the, uh, the Precinct 5 Montgomery County Police Department uh, or Constable's Office, Precinct 5 Constable's Office. Uh, he filed the complaint against the officers and um, and so, you know, that they're supposed to then, the, the, the main constable is supposed to then follow up, reprimand, investigate, and figure out what to do about the situation. We have not heard any follow-up uh, since that complaint was filed about two weeks ago. And who pays all the medical bills which are gonna be extensive for an injury of that type? Well, you know, that's, that's the big question, right? Uh, and that's why there is a civil lawsuit because Gary, and I don't think very many people at all could cover that much medical bills. I mean, we're talking about, um, major catastrophic neck surgery um, and the medical bills are going to be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. So at the moment, you know, uh, nobody's paying them. Uh, you know, we're trying to help him in the community. We're trying to get the community to support through his GoFundMe page, which we'll talk about in a second, to uh, get people to help him with those necessity um, expenses that he has. Uh, you know, he has to go for regular doctor's appointments he has to get medication he has to pay for the wheelchair and uh, a number of other um you know medical needs that are ongoing but ultimately at the end of the day he's going to be left with a medical bill well upwards of a hundred thousand dollars or and you know definitely more than that but it's, it's going to be very expensive and this is just because the police officers decided to follow somebody that they think came too close to them as he passed them when they were on another traffic stop. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, that's what that's what the criminal um, uh, indictments state themselves, that he was just he just went around them during while they were at a traffic stop. It, he never got cited for, you know, anything else. He got cited for um, um, evading arrest and for um, um, assaulting or harassing a police officer. Typical, uh, that is a typical way that they get around it. Okay, now let, let's uh, go about eyewitnesses. Uh, uh, do, do they have dash cam at all? We have requested the dash cam and the body cam videos. Um, this, is a, this is a new case and it is fresh. So uh, th those are, pending we should be having those hopefully soon and if and you know there's sometimes a battle to get those so and yeah. eyewitnesses we do have our eyewitnesses at least at least two definite eyewitnesses um that are part of the community and have they been uh uh what do you call that word De uh debriefed yet or we have with the help of the houston peace and justice center uh we have uh got their statements and they've uh promise to to be available if, if needed for trial okay now uh jeff you are uh putting together i think uh, on your own behalf a a zoom call to bring some more awareness to this is that correct yes it's not on just my behalf but actually the greater houston coalition for justice cops and communities lulac and we the people organize have also joined with us to help uh gary berger in, in his case uh, Albert, I don't know if you mentioned the fact that the officer filed a protective order against Gary when he was in the hospital. And that was pretty sneaky and kind of cowardly. And I, I recognize that as a maneuver to try to, you know, divert the blame of what they had done onto Gary. And that's a terrible thing. I, that, yeah, that let, a, me, it, let me it, stop you there because I want to ask the lawyer something now. Alberto, please tell me, why would a police officer ever attach 
such a, uh, a restraining order on uh, somebody that's in the hospital with a broken neck? Well, you know, clearly a restraining order is a protective order uh, is another word for it, uh, is something that's used to protect someone against potential violence or danger uh, to themselves or others in their family. And, you know, uh, in this case, however, uh, as you stated earlier, you know, we believe that it's just a, um, a tactic that the police officer used to try to cover himself uh, for the eventual um, attack on his credibility uh, and on the basis for him having injured the defendant so badly. So now in that protective order, what is, what is he trying to be protected against? What is he saying? The threats of what violence. Is his, what is his fear? Right. Well, his 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 fear is 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 retribution. That uh, you know, a, a guy with a broken neck somehow is going to go after him. You know, <laughs> and um, it's just it's really unfortunate. You know, uh, it's the kind of thing that we continue to see with police officers uh, utilizing their authority to. Uh, protect themselves from accountability. That's really the issue that we face in the whole nation. You know, uh, officers having uh, the uh, immunity clause and uh, different protections that have, you know, prevented regular citizens from protecting their rights and recovering for their injuries. Um, it's amazing to me, but I just think that something needs to be done to make sure that in this case, we can show the example of just how far the police are, are willing to go. I don't think there's a lot of police brutality cases where the police have asked for a protective order. I know that that is, that is simply funny. Uh, now, I mean, we have to bring back the police to remember that they are there to protect us and not the other way around. They have their own institutions as if the police is something within itself. They are there for us. It's hard to understand how we get police unions and all these kinds of things that, that are there to pro protect the interests of cops and not the interests of the people. Jeff, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you intend to do with the Zoom call? And also if you want to mention about the GoFundMe. Yes, that's the main reason uh, that we were doing this Zoom is to generate um, publicity of what's really going on in this case and to help Gary with his medical bills and, and his legal bills, too. Um, he's, he's lucky he's got a good law firm that's helping him, but he's still facing a very uphill battle. Um, I think they had only raised like six hundred dollars. Albert. I mean, the last time I checked. Right. So, I am going to put the, I'm going to put the link in there, uh, Jeff. So why don't you tell us how we can uh, get to the Zoom? I think the Zoom is tomorrow. Yes, the, the Zoom is tomorrow at 7.15. And uh, yeah, we're sending, yeah. Yeah, uh, we'll send a link out if that's okay. I, I've sent a, an invitation out to many different organizations to help us in, in this endeavor and to help us fight the overall systemic problem of police abuse. And it doesn't get in my mind, worse than this case right here. And but look, so, yeah, it, and it's the, the bad thing is we're talking Pinehurst, Texas, uh, Montgomery County, it's it's very conservative area. And a lot of people, they have a bias to for the police that law enforcement is going to be there to protect them. And I had a, a discussion with someone just last night, the same individual who's very pro police almost was arrested after he sold his truck. And someone used his truck to commit a crime. And it was a serious crime of a bubblegum machine being stolen, but it turned into a felony. And the agency was a smaller agency. And they so they, they asked my, this individual to come down to the station. So when I was asked what to do, I said, no, you don't go to the station. You get an attorney. Then right. you go to the station. And sure enough, he got an attorney, he went down there, and they tried to arrest him, even though he had nothing to do with it. They had a video camera of the actual perpetrator. They didn't care. They were going to arrest this man who had sold his truck for that crime. And um, there's a young man named Anthony Graves. I don't know. He's with Texas Southern University Forensic Institute now. He spent 23 years on death row. For I know him. He didn't come in. I know him well. I interviewed him before. Yeah. yeah. But Jeff, we got to go here. So uh, real quickly, um, 
give me a, a quick one short closer that we, that our audience need to know, and then I'll ask the same of Alberto Ruiz. And we need to stand together and, and fight fight the, the fight the, the battle, if you will, and stand up for what's right. And uh, you know what's wrong, we need to stand against that. So. Thank you very much, uh, Jeff. Alberto. We invite the community and the public to join us at, on our Zoom meeting. Uh, it's just a coalition meeting to inform the community of what's going on tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. And we ask that you get on that GoFundMe page and donate to Gary for his, uh, his special needs. And we hope that we can count on your support. Look, guys, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Alberto, for, uh, for being on the program. I think uh, this is how uh, things that a lot of times the mainstream media doesn't cover requires that we actually take active control and do it. Thank you guys both for being here on Politics and Right. Thank, thank you. you. We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.